Did you hear that? How about now? It sounds like a whisper. No, it's getting louder. It's turning into a shout. It's the sound of boots on the ground, poets, prophets, everyday women placing value upon humanity, getting louder with each passing year. They're in the thousands of fight club contending for children and sisters and nations that matter. And by nightfall, still smiling. And tonight, gathering in homes and spaces around the world, they're bringing the strength of sisterhood to the table. So switch on the kettle, turn up the volume, smile at that friend alongside, and get your ducks in a row as we join Bobby and friends from Sydney in that wild land down under to celebrate, champion, and rally this end of year season with a shout and a cheer. Welcome to Sisterhood United Night. We are so excited to be back together. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's sisterhood. It is. I mean, we're here. You're here. I'm Danny. This is Andrea. We're so excited you're joining us. If you're in the chat, yes. type in, let us know where you're watching from. Maybe Ma you're with your connect group. Maybe with your connect group. Maybe you're in your pajamas. Ooh, That would be a good night. I really love doing church in my pajamas. I have to be honest. Well, you know what? It's Sisterhood United Night. You might have your hot chocolate. You might be Ooh. hanging out. We are just happy that you are with us. Make sure you follow us on, uh, in Instagram. on Instagram. Sisterhood East Coast. That's on Instagram, we're back. <laughs> we're we're just we're back. We're back. Sisterhood is back. It's good. I mean, look, I do love sisterhood because it's a time where we get to hang out with the girls. I mean, we've got the girls behind us. Beautiful girls. This is I don't know if you remember, you probably do. I chopped my hair off in the summer. Yeah. Because it was so hot. Yeah. I felt like my hair was suffocating me. <laughs> but now it's winter and now I'm cold and I wanna. So oh. These are my hair girls right hair, here. Hair girls? Beautiful oh. girl oh. in the okay. red Can you with see? the beanie. This will probably This is just... the length. This is my goal. But with I think I'm gonna keep my fringe. It will never be my reality, and <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'll just embrace embrace. But you look great with this. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. We're, we're all shapes and sizes and packages and everyone is amazing and beautiful. And uh, and if you are with us um, tonight and this is your first time to Sisterhood or to anything with us um, for Hillsong East Coast, we are so glad that you are with us. Welcome. Um, at Sisterhood, we always like to take time to, um, to honour and to um, place value because it's kind of cool cheering people on because that's also what sisterhood's all about. It's great. I love getting encouraged by my girlfriend. Yes. You're a great encourager. Oh, oh. I always feel encouraged Thank after you. I leave. Oh, oh that's so nice. But right now, um, we did want to take just a little bit of a moment to honour one of the beautiful, um, amazing volunteers. And she's probably going to cringe because she's not she's trying be happy to, about She's actually this, trying to run away Because she right knows now. what's happening. And this is, um, I, w I just wanted to invite Michelle to come over here. And she's Join like, us, Michelle. she's just having a moment because she's she's probably feeling not camera ready, but you are gorgeous you in all of camera. your beauty. Because because I just wanted to take stand. a moment, stand in the middle. Stand in the middle. And this is Michelle Palafox. Um, she looks after Alpha Photography team. And, uh, and not only is she incredibly talented creatively, but she's a phenomenal team leader and uh, and so faithful mm -hmm. and incredible through this whole last season. And, um, and you tell stories so beautifully. She and does. you run like a pretty insanely awesome connect group in Brooklyn, which mm -hmm. I heard has exploded. I mean, I want to come to your connect group. I want to come to your connect group. <laughs> but go. we did we did want to give you a little gift um, just as a little moment to just say thank you. Um, and I know we could probably do this um, for for – Many, many people in our um, in our amazing team um, volunteers, but right now we just do want to acknowledge one on behalf of all the amazing volunteers. This is a little gift just to say thank you. We love, we love you. you. We appreciate you and all the volunteers. Thank you so much for everything that you do to make church life amazing. Love you. <laughs> so good. Love so you. great. 
so good. Those those little moments. I love of hugs. our volunteers. It's it's pretty awesome. We couldn't do what we do without our volunteers. That's totally true. And uh, and especially coming into Christmas time, there's a whole bunch happening, and um, volunteers help. Um, I mean, we had Thanksgiving the other week, and we had a whole bunch of volunteers um, making making things really special for our community. But for Christmas time, Christmas is my favorite season. Look, Christmas, I know this I because she's Christmas. had her Christmas tree up since November October. 7. Oh, November. November 7. Okay, I thought it was I October. Gave, I gave Halloween the respect <laughs> I deserve for two weeks. But Christmas is my favorite time of year. My tree, as Danny mentioned, has been up since November 7th. <laughs> but I love that as a church, we get to give back in this season. Yeah. And as a church with Angel Tree, we're looking yeah. to sponsor 200 children yes. from all over the country and give them Christmas presents this season. And you know what? Through our partnership with Prison Fellowship, we're able to send a gift to a child whose um, parent is incarcerated. And, and I think as a sisterhood, mm-hmm. How amazing if we just sponsored those 200 kids straight up and just even had to ask for more. I mean, wouldn't that, would that be, be phenomenal? I know um, I've talked to my kids about it, my four girls, and um, and we're going to sit down together. And um, and it's actually really beautiful. Um, you can you can text um, Angel Tree to 84,000 and then a link pops back to you and you have this opportunity to be able to um, go on and... And, and actually select a child's name. And uh, I'm going to get my kids to do that with me. So they're all going to so sponsor special. a particular child. And uh, and it's going to be really cool to um, invite the kids and family and teach them the pathway of generosity. So it's very exciting. It's very so special. good. Well, you know, what? Um, in, in this season, we've just coming through our heart for the house season. And I love that as a church through City Hope, we've been able to partner with incredible organisations, making a really incredible big impact in our community and so through Heart for the House we've been able to support some organisations like Bowery Missions, Father's Heart, City Relief. I know in Boston we support ABCD um, and this has all been possible because of the generous gifts through Heart for the House. So if you haven't had an opportunity to join with us um, it's still open and you can text H4TH uh, to 84,000 to partner with us. I love the the generosity of our church. It's really beautiful. so everything cool. we get to partner with. So cool. Well, Andrea, love you. I just wanted to take a moment you. to, um, before we jump in to hear from our senior pastor, Pastor Bobby, just to share a little bit of my heart um, for sisterhood. And, and maybe you're new to the mix. Maybe you've been around for a little while. Either way, I want you to know that I love sisterhood. Like I really, really love sisterhood and everything it represents. And uh, at the heart of sisterhood, there's always been a mandate to place value on womanhood so we can place value on humanity. It's about everyday ordinary girls like you and me united in friendship and cause who embody the love of Christ and want to make the world a better place. And uh, and for me, in years gone, I've spent over a decade, I mean, that's a really long time, over a decade on staff in our church, building into the lives of women through sisterhood and with four daughters of my own. That's right, four daughters of my own. I not only have my own little sisterhood, but I understand its potency and its necessity. So the message of sisterhood is necessary for my girls and every other younger and older woman to understand you are valuable. That's right. You are valuable, strong, capable and powerful to become all you can be in Christ. And ever since I came to our church as a 16 year old, I watched as all walks of women, a generation ahead of me, mothered their children, loved their husbands, forged ahead in careers, all whilst pursuing Jesus wholeheartedly and building His church. I believe in the strength of generations coming alongside each other and I pray Hillsong Sisterhood East Coast would be a place we'd continue to see that come to life. There is nothing more formidable than a company of women who love Jesus and His church, who cheer each other on, put some like cheerleading, I don't even know if there's like cheerleading emojis or like hands in the air, but who cheer each other on and have a heart to leave a residue of God's goodness in every person we meet. So girls, I am so excited for what this space 
the space of sisterhood might become in the days ahead. So, you know, lean in, stay tuned. Hopefully we'll be doing a Sisterhood United Night before Colour 2022, which is going to be great. But right now we're going to hear from our global senior pastor, Bobby. And, uh, and Australia has been in and out of lockdowns uh, for like the last couple of months. So for United Night, they connected in from homes and watch parties. And, uh, and we're going to connect in with Bobby, where she's gathered with a couple of the girls for a chat. And then she has a word on her heart for us all. So let's get ready. Grab your notebooks and your Bibles and let's lean into Pastor Bobby and the team. Well, good evening, girls. Hi, how are you? And welcome, welcome, welcome this, to our Sisterhood United Global Night for 2021. How are you? Okay, we are just laughing because we are in the studio here and somebody was counting me down and I said, stop doing the countdown. And so they stopped and then it's just like we didn't know where we were. But how are you, girls? Are you good? Amen. It has been a long time. It has been... Oh, I'm... <laughs> falling over my lips here. It has been a while since we've been together. Yeah. But you know what? We are actually here and I'm excited about that. So girls, wherever you are, wherever you are in the world, wherever, um, whether you're in watch parties across the nation or the nations, whether you are um, gathered in rooms, which a lot of our locations are doing this year, um, or whether you are just online in the comfort of your home. It's a w um, wet, wintry sort of feeling night here in Sydney. But wherever you are, we are just so glad that you are here. And you know what, girls, for the record, I just want to say, we are still smiling. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we still smiling, girls? Still we smiling. are still <laughs> smiling. Hallelujah. Like that beautiful little um, introduction video where the girl turned around and smiled and there was a glint in her teeth. We are still smiling. By the grace of God, we are still rallying the troops. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are still up for everything that God is Amen. wanting to do in our lives. And that is a given in Jesus' name. So I can see lots and lots of girls on the chat and that is wonderful and exciting. Amen. Are you good? <laughs> Praise God. We just got through the awkward first minute of every <laughs> online experience. And I love that. Hey, girls, did you get to see that really cute introduction? I absolutely loved it. That wee introduction. And shout out to the team for producing that. It was so much fun when they sent it to me this week. I literally laughed out loud a couple of times. And I am giving them a shout out because as a church, we have just honestly, we have just executed so much in the past week with the worship conference but it was so fun so would you actually like to see it again would you like to see that wee thing again because yes. surely yes. surely there are girls who were sitting down and had their backside in the wrong direction and didn't see it yeah. uh, there might have been girls still in the toilet some of you might have still been putting on your yeah. turning on your devices for online here tonight so why don't we just watch the screen again one more time and just absorb how cute this is hey man this is our story watch this did you hear that how about now? It sounds like a whisper. No, it's getting louder. It's turning into a shout. It's the sound of boots on the ground, poets, prophets, everyday women placing value upon humanity, getting louder with each passing year. They're in the thousands of Fight Club contending for children and sisters and nations that matter. And by nightfall, still smiling, and tonight, gathering in homes and spaces around the world, they're bringing the strength of sisterhood to the table. So switch on the kettle, turn up the volume, smile at that friend alongside, and get your ducks in a row as we join Bobby and friends from Sydney in that wild land down under to celebrate, champion, and rally this end of year season with a shout and a cheer. <laughs> Amen. You gotta love that. So fun. What does it say? Did you hear the whisper? Is it a shout? <laughs> Boots on the ground. Ducks in a row, too many cute things, amen, too many cute things. Shall we pray tonight, girls, and really commit our night to the Lord, amen? All right, Father God, I just want to thank you for every single person who is connected in here tonight. I want to thank you, Father God, for the power of sisterhood in our lives. And Lord, I, do, I personally don't take it for granted. So Father God, this is a, going to be a great night. It's going to be a night where I believe that your spirit is going to be present and you are going to be present in our fellowship and our community together. And so Father, have your way. Bless every home and every household. Bless every woman and every young woman, every girl who might be watching. And even bless the men 
men, if the men are watching, because you know what, gentlemen, you're welcome. You're always welcome here. And Father, I just pray that you'll have your divine way in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Okay, girls, just before we get going, because I'm going to have a little bit of a chat with these girls, and in a moment, I'm going to um, share with you. I don't have a big preach plan. I just have something on my heart that I want to encourage you with. But um, just, just for the record, tonight we are gathered in here in this beautiful studio in Sydney. We're all together, okay? All around the world, we're here together. And then um, after I've spoken and shared, I, I'm actually going to throw it back to our local, um, back to our global um, locations and um, have empowered our lead girls to just take um, – their nights in whatever direction they want and make it local. And then, but the Aussie girls, you after that, you're going to come back into the studio with us. And I've got Cass and I've got Laura here and got some others joining. So it's actually going to be a great night. Amen. Would you like a little praise report? Okay, Cass, good evening. How are Hi. you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm yes. still standing and still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> good job. But are you actually up for all God wants to do in your life? Gee, I hope so. More th <laughs> yeah. Yes, you are. More yeah. than ever you are. I really am. And it's really nice to see you, Laura, always. Thanks, Mum. You're welcome. Likewise. <laughs> Likewise. Are you well? I am so well. Yeah. I am well. awake? <laughs> I am awake. Okay, so funny story. <laughs> Last night, I woke up at 3 a.m. Right. And I had this sudden urge to just wash my hair. And I was like, don't be ridiculous, hey. Laura. Like, go back to sleep. That's what you need to do. And I was like, no, I need to wash my hair. So I got out of bed. I hopped in the shower, washed my hair at 3 a.m. in the morning, and then wow. climbed back into bed. And Pete was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, it doesn't Are you sure that me. you didn't dream that? I didn't dream it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, so I'm, I'm still awake. Okay. You're still smiling and I'm still awake. Yeah, good. Well, I don't know about in this COVID season, but honestly, like we've started here at 8 p.m. in Sydney time and I'm usually in bed at 8 p.m. I am heading really? to bed. Yes, I know. I don't know what it is. Well, hey, but listen, just before I forget, just one little praise report. So this is great. The girls are telling me it's going to go up on the screen. But um, the exciting thing about tonight, because it is our Sisterhood United, what is it, our Sisterhood what is it called? Sisterhood United Night. Yeah, it is our Sisterhood United Night <laughs> Global 2021. That's what I was going to say. Um, but we've actually got girls gathering from 32 nations wow. tonight. Um, we have 21 locations around the world who are having watch parties and hosting them all over the city and what have you. And we have 26. Everyone say 26. 26. 26 locations who are actually going live and gathered in the room wow. like we all used to before COVID happened. And so here is just a tiny glimpse of some of the many places that our girls are gathering from. So it's kind of lovely, isn't it? It's exciting. Fantastic. Okay, ladies, we have just come out of Worship and Creative Conference, yes, we which was fantastic. And I just need to give honour where honour is due to you, Kaz, yeah. for the remarkable, you and Richard and the team, you just executed the most stunning yeah. conference. Thank 24 you. hours of content <laughs> straight. It was hilarious, yeah. girls. And I know that many of you actually hooked in for that because actually tonight's a little in-house. We're actually, um, this is our church. And of course, if you're leaning in online from somewhere else, you know, you're always welcome in our house. But Kaz, honestly... You did a great job. Thanks. And I and you if you're a little Just bit tired sure. right tonight, that's actually okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amy, and you've also got a daughter who's doing year twelve. So you're going home tonight yep. to go through Ex what is modern that? history notes. Oh my gosh, yeah. modern history. <laughs> Arab Israeli conflict is what we're doing tonight. Oh, wow. yeah. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. Yeah. Put your hands towards class <laughs> I need right it. now. Yeah. But darling, sweetheart, just tell us just quickly a little bit of what the conference was like was like. Tell the girls and yeah. just why it was actually so important for our church. Yeah, I, I think well, firstly, because Jesus turned up and surprised us in the most beautiful way. Like it Aww. felt like conference, eh? Hey? Yeah. I was a tiny bit sceptical about online. And then a friend wrote to me afterwards, said, I've been doing live church for the last year. And I hooked in and I watched it. And actually Jesus walked into my room and he didn't leave for that whole 24 hour period. It's beautiful. But we put on a range of content, everything from Pastor Bobby preaching and JD to um, conversations with Dallas Jenkins, who was the producer of The Chosen, to United 
hour, Young Free Hour, our global church for the first time ever really helped carry the load. So we had Spanish Hour with the South Americans. Aww. We had Sweden, London, <laughs> postcards from most of our global campuses. Um, our team in the USA took us on a road trip across the whole of the United States. Pastor Terry Chris preached, Sam Collier in Atlanta. So like it looked like our church globally and the footprint was magnificent, but we have a mandate to worship. Yeah. And I feel like we did that, right? Midnight Massive was just spectacular. Beautiful. And and the presence of God was here and real and He was speaking to us. And I felt like at the end of the weekend, the cobwebs were blown out of our team. And when we led church on Sunday morning, it felt like we were back. Yeah. And there was a real um, desire and a hunger to seek God like never before. I think one of the prevailing things for me, Cass, was just that it stirred the gift and the measure within yeah. our church. Right. And we're a local church. We're, local, we're a local church all around the world. But we're a local church who knows how to worship. Part of our mandate is to worship and to lead others in worship. And, um, you know, I just feel like it just stirred that measure and the gift. Right. And so the reason I'm saying that, guys, is because if you haven't engaged yet, it's still available. It's an online conference. This is not an advertisement. This is an exhortation to our to the heartbeat of our church. And I just want to encourage you, you can go on and, like, it's on demand for a, yeah. a while. And you can just, like, take time yep. to um, enjoy it. And, and there's no, like 24 hours of content plus 25 masterclasses. So there's, totally. And it's like the cost of a book. So for the yeah, cost of a book, not even that. you can actually feed your soul and it's yeah. beautiful. So I have decided this summer, because we're heading into summer, guys, that, um, you know, rather than just lose myself to mindless television series or Netflix, which I will probably still do, <laughs> I am going to like circle back and yeah, I'm going to really watch and absorb because it was a gift from heaven. Hey, Bella. Yes. Yes. Was there a favourite moment for you? Was there a moment that um, stood out for you? <laughs> I, there were there were so many moments, and we were just saying we felt like it was the, <laughs> like five loaves and two fish. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I get dyslexic sometimes. I'm like, wait, is it two loaves, five fish, five? <laughs> anyway, um, but no, we just I just feel like I, I'm so um, grateful for our team because I feel like they just rallied together and they just bought what they had and God multiplied it in age. the most beautiful way. But for me, it was definitely the worship. I just, mm. I just loved watching our team just again, beautiful. just rally together. And they're like, they go into battle, you know, and they're, and they're well equipped yeah. to just take, you know, just to do that, that, that groundwork really. And I just, I loved that. The presence of God was stunning. The new, the new songs, so beautiful. Yeah. I do feel that a favorite moment for me was, um, Alex Peppers. Oh, yeah. Pommy Pat. <laughs> Which Pommy version? Pat, yeah. I don't know <laughs> if that's actually, we're allowed to say that anymore. Shout out to all the girls in the UK <laughs> right now. But um, yeah, British Paps was pretty amazing. Yes. So just FYI, Alex Pappas was in the opener and he was involved in everything. And then suddenly <laughs> he was in the Young and Free Hour wearing all his different personalities. And then he was being called back to you on the main stage across there in the um, in the convention centre to like prepare for the Midnight Massive. So yep. and shout I, out to him. I wrote to his wife and I went, who is your husband? He's amazing. And she goes, he's amazing, but he's wearing my purse chain around his oh. neck. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, just quickly before I get to share the word because yeah. we can talk on forever. But, you know, I, I mean, obviously the last two years have been challenging and, you know, we can always sort of camp there a little bit but I know it's been tough and I know it's been tedious but for each of you has there been um, something that has surprised your expectation this year Cass yeah okay 2021 the thing that has surprised my expectation is that I have watched God revisit dreams that my friends have had and bring things to pass. So January 2021, my friend Ruth Strother, she's like in her 40s. She met the man of her dreams and she married him. And then I think we watched your EA Laurie, yes. who is similar, who maybe wondered if God had forgotten her, find the man of her dreams and get married. And then this weekend at WCC, I stood next to a friend of mine and she went, I thought God had forgotten me, but I'm engaged to get married. And I went, oh my goodness. And then Cindy Smith, who is um, one of our great girls, she actually just had a miracle baby. Mm -hmm. And so I think it surprised me about the beauty of God to redeem dreams and breathe life into them again. And I've watched it happen over and over and over again this year and been able to celebrate on Zoom baby showers and weddings and all kinds of things. It just made me go, God, you're still at work and you're doing beautiful things and we shouldn't lose hope. I love that. Amen. Without a shadow of a doubt, whatever the dream is in your heart, whatever it is, 
you know, the Spirit of God sees that. It's not over till it's over, girls. Yeah. And um, I, I do. I, it was like we could talk about some of the, the struggles, but it was like, what has surprised your expectation? I love that. Amen. Yeah. Laura, what about you, darling? Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, it's been an interesting year. And um, I don't know if, if this has like surprised my expectations as much as I just feel like God has placed this emphasis on this incredible community that I belong to, this family um, that we call church. And I think for me, the most beautiful part of this year has been friendships. And um, I have just, I have just fa- like found myself just so grateful to God for my friends. They've just shown up, they've turned up. And I feel like if ever there are, you know, is that if, the, you know, if ever there's a crisis or, or in, in people's lives, it's just like the sisterhood, right? To rally together and turn up in the midst of it. And I feel like my girlfriends have just shown up for me. And I'm so grateful because they left, um, you know, little notes at my door with scripture. And, you know, one day, one day Taya left, um, you know, a letter at my door and it was my favorite Psalm. And she would not know, like not have known that. And then the next day, Kimmy um, left a note at my door and it was like my childhood verse that has just defined my life. And I've got, um, I've got them on my bathroom mirror. So every single day as I brush my teeth and I, I get myself ready, I am reading scripture and I'm just reminded that I am surrounded by the most beautiful friends. And so it's been the best emphasis um, in 2021. I love that. That is perfect. That is perfect. And I'm sure in your, wherever you are right now, you can actually tell similar stories. So you know what? In a moment, right now, actually not in a moment, right now, Laura is going to move over there (laughs) and I am going to stand up because I do better when I stand up and I am going to encourage you girls in the Word of God. So just to give you some movement, why don't you just turn around and if you have someone in your world, just give them like a little um, kiss or a hug if you're allowed to do that, COVID safe and um, or a little elbow whatever and I am just going to encourage you for a few moments if that is okay because are we happy with that very all right so praise the Lord amen we've already prayed but Father God I just pray that you will just um, overshadow this little encouragement that I have with the girls amen in Jesus name fantastic all right Big picture, sweethearts of the earth. Um, Everyone say sweethearts of the earth. You can put that into the live chat if you actually want to. Um, I really wanted um, tonight to be buoyant. I wanted to it to feel buoyant and uplifting. And like we said at the front end, I think, hang on, I am now standing on something. I'm standing on my tissue and my fisherman's friend, which is down <laughs> here. Don't worry, guys. It's all good. Amen. <laughs> um, I, yeah, this is our end of year Sisterhood United Night Global. So we don't have many occasions when we actually can gather together um, outside of colour. So it's tonight. And of course, colour has been compromised the last couple of years. Um, This is um, our end of year. For many of us, this is our end of year Christmas wing dig. Hallelujah. Um, And it's also the relaunch of the colour season, which we do every year at this time of the year. And again, I wanted it to be buoyant. I wanted it to be uplifting. I wanted you to come in tonight and to be encouraged and to be uplifted. And I want you to actually leave tonight, whatever the scenario. Obviously, if you're at home in your own house, you're not going to be leaving. But I wanted you to leave again, uplifted and encouraged. You know, Pastor Brian has, we've had a philosophy in our church, if you can say that, if you can use that word. And he's always said, you know what, I want people to leave church feeling better and stronger than when they came in. They might walk in with the weight of the world on their shoulders. They might walk in discouraged. But he says, I want church. I want every gathering that we have in this church. I want people to walk out feeling better than then than they walked in. And you know, in all truthfulness, that is who we are. We are actually a sisterhood of women. We are a sisterhood who are one another's keepers. Part of our mandate as sisterhood is to actually encourage one another and to be sensitive to one another. And so I really pray that tonight from me to you, through these screens, from us to you, wherever you are and whatever scenario you are in, that you will actually feel that way in Jesus' name. You know, a few days um, ago, I woke up mindful of tonight and I woke up with these words in my spirit, still smiling 
and still here, girls. Still smiling and still here, girls. Now, obviously, girls, still smiling has just been part of the landscape for the last year, 18 months. I firmly believe that by the grace of God, we are called to be a smiling sisterhood by the grace of God. Amen. It's part of Proverbs 31. She smiles at the future, knowing that she and her household are prepared for whatever they're facing and the future ahead. But what I felt in my spirit was still smiling and still here, girls. As in, as, as in um, the girls and the women who have gone ahead to heaven, actually looking down and saying, hey, girls, still smiling and still here. As in an echo coming from heaven. Now, I often say to you, girls, we're still here and we're encouraging one another. But what I sensed in my spirit as I awoke was heaven, that grand host of people who are in heaven watching over us, cheering us up cheering us on, I felt like it was an echo from the girls above, the girls who have gone before, the women and girls who have actually carved out territory for us and are watching us from heaven. You know, I often don't think of them as an entity. I don't often think of the sisterhood in heaven looking down upon us and cheering us on, right? But that's what I felt in my spirit, as if they were saying, girls, we are actually here. We are here. In in many ways, it felt like the Sarahs of this world, the Miriams of this world, you know, the Esthers of this world, all the amazing Bible women um, past and, you know, since cheering us on, all the brave women who run in our family. Amen. I don't know if you girls know or remember, but, you know, for about three years here in Sydney, Australia, we taught on the women in the Bible. We spent three years and we called the entire series Brave Women Run in My Family. And it just felt for a split second when I awoke that this chorus of women, this echo from heaven was saying, hey girls, still smiling and still here. We're still here. As if they were saying, you know what? We're watching from heaven. We're watching from heaven and you've got this. You've actually got this, girls. Don't forget that you've got it. And as you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, as you hold fast to what you believe, do you know what? You are going to stand with us in eternity and you are going to be counted amongst the faithful on the earth who um, passed the test of time and actually lived their way in such a way that they actually have left a mark on eternity. You know, um, at the Worship and Creative Conference this past weekend, I got to share and I haven't preached for a long time, so hallelujah. And, um, you know, I spoke a message um, called Under These Same Skies, Under These Same Skies. So obviously I was leveraging out of the new album that's just been released. And um, I just presented a question, what will these same skies what will, they, what will they observe and witness from our generation? These same skies that have seen generation after generation after generation pass beneath them. What will they say? What will they witness? What will they testify of our generation? And, you know, I wrote here in my notes, they're saying, you know, if you stand firm, I wrote this in my notes, if you, if you stand firm, um, you're going to stand with us and be counted amongst those who have stood the test of time. That is our test, girls. We are in a pocket, a dimension on the earth called time. And we get to walk through life. We get to make decisions. We get to live outwork our challenges and we get to live unto this King of Kings. But you know, what will time testify of us? You know, the Sarahs of this world, I believe the Sarahs of this world are the girls who received and recognised the promises of God, but didn't allow any limitations to quench that promise in their life. So we're talking about the Sarahs of this world looking down from heaven. You know, the Miriams of this world, the Miriams of this world who have gone before. These are the girls who, you know, have crossed through enormous challenge. They've passed through immense challenges in their lives. And when everyone else is sometimes standing there shocked or, you know, a little dumbfounded or, you know, in a state of paralysis because of the experience that they've just gone through, the Miriams of this world are the girls who go, you know what, we're going to arrest the atmosphere. We're going to arrest the um, the dynamics here. And they you know, figuratively speak, pick up their tambourines and they begin to actually encourage all the girls. We're not picking up tambourines, by the way, girls, but we, we're going to encourage everyone to worship and to praise God. And the reason I say that is because, you know what, worship is what fuels heaven. 
If you actually think about what happened with Miriam's story, you know, the children of Israel had been in captivity for hundreds of years. And then God stepped in a divine intervention. They were released from that captivity and then they were on their way into the promised land. Then suddenly the enemy decided to pursue them again. They're caught in a precarious situation. They're trapped. And then God intervenes with this miracle. He parts the sea, they cross through. And then if you look at Exodus, it's like the children of Israel had a, a tendency to just like to pause, to get dumbfounded, to start whinging and whining again. They weren't used to freedom. They were caught in the ways of captivity. And so in that story, Miriam, like I just said, she actually began to harness the atmosphere. That's what I believe that the girls who have gone before us are saying to us down here right now on earth. You know, the Esthers of this world are the girls who, you know it, you can, you can say it with me, are the girls who realised, hello, that they were born for such a time as this. And um, you know what? Somehow they summon courage. They summon boldness to actually stand up and stand in the gaps. And, um, you know, sometimes when you, you know, when you use that word summon, it can sound a little bit dark, to be honest, a little bit dark, but it's, it, it's not dark. It's actually magnificent. The word summon, to summon courage, to summon boldness is literally to muster, to gather, to collect, to rally. Amen. Perfect. We've got a sign up here saying rally the smile. Hallelujah. It is to call to action. It is to mobilise. Girls, it's basically all the words that we know and love about sisterhood and this incredible message that we've been entrusted with. And um, I think women like this, okay, like the, the Sarahs, the Miriams, the, the Esthers, the Ruths, the Naomis, all the girls straight down through time and history. Do you know, these are the girls who... Um, it's like they, they are nurturing and tending the garden of our lives, the garden of family and church and community and ultimately this world. And I actually love this image here because it's got, I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if the cameras can go wide angle, but it's just beautiful footage and I just love how the team just um, sketched beautiful flowers into this because that's what God has called us to do, to tend these gardens in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I love that. I have a friend, a very close friend who, oh, I just spat. Hallelujah. Um, I have a very close friend who um, is going through a really tough time right now, a really, really tough time. And um, she texted me the other night and she said, you know what, Bob, we're going to have great testimonies to tell from this season. And I went, I'm like, yeah, we are. Because, you know, whilst my circumstances are different to hers, you know what? I'm going through circumstances. I'm going through a huge challenge with my beloved husband. And um, when it comes to the future and what have you, and um, you know what? Yeah, by the grace of God, we're going to stay our course. The girls from heaven are saying, you've got this. <laughs> you've got this. Can you hear them in Jesus' name? Amen. So I love that. Hey, um, you know, uh, Tuesday was it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday I woke up having gone to sleep the night before saying, Lord, please help me to frame this tonight. Um, and I woke up the next day and um, I just felt the Spirit of God say, remind them from Philippians 1 verse 6. Remind the girls tonight that I am the God who is well able to complete what I have begun in their lives. And I know that Philippians 1 6 is familiar we probably all write it on birthday cards and farewell cards like you're going off into the future, hallelujah. And we write Philippians 1, 6, the God who has begun a good work in you is going to complete it. We all know these verses, but they're actually really beautiful. So tonight, I'm just going to read this over you, all right? Philippians 1, verses uh, 3 to 7, actually. And I'm reading from the Amplified. So just listen to the Word of God. It says, I thank my God. So the Apostle was saying, I thank my God in every remembrance of you always offering every prayer of mine with joy and with a specific request for all of you. Thanking God for your, listen to these beautiful words, thanking God for your participation and partnership, both your comforting fellowship and your gracious contributions. Isn't that gorgeous? Like how beautiful is that? Like I pray tonight in your fellowship, wherever it is, that you actually are experiencing this, a sense of participation together, a sense of partnership in life, that you are um, recipient of His comforting fellowship. How lovely is that? It goes on and it says, um, so it says, thanking God for your participation and partnership, 
both your comforting fellowship and gracious contribution in advancing the good news regarding salvation from the first day you heard it until now. Verse 6, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that He who began, He, our beautiful God in heaven, that He who began a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of His return. Verse 7, He says, You know what? It is right for me to feel this way about you because you have me in your heart. And I have you in my heart. And then he goes on and he says, because all of us share in his matchless grace together. We share in his matchless grace together. Girls, we worship a God. Can I just say this tonight? I feel like I'm talking at 100 miles per hour. Hallelujah. (laughs) But can I just say tonight, we worship a God who has not moved in his stance towards us, towards you. He has not moved in his stance And so, you know what, in a moment, girls, um, we are going to watch and we're going to absorb the Colour 22, amen, coming up, um, trailer, a beautiful trailer, because this conference coming up is part of our mandate. If you're a part of Hillsong Church, if you are counted amongst the women of Hillsong Church, then this conference and what it represents is part of our calling and our mandate. For 26 years, actually. And if you're new to the page, this conference, this gathering, again, 26, it'll be our 26th year, um, is about encouraging and inspiring and empowering women. And um, I actually hadn't seen this trailer for a long time. And so I watched it just a few days ago, and it really just reminded me of God's incredible faithfulness in the way that He has led us. And not only His faithfulness in the way that He has led us, but His faithfulness to us going forward, His eternal view of our lives. You know, so often we view life as with a worldview, a worldview, but God sits in heaven. Our remarkable God is in heaven viewing life with an eternal view. And the prevailing verses that I put in the invitation for next year um, were from Song of Solomon. And obviously last colour, 2021, where we did a beautiful online conference. Do you remember that? It had a remarkable lean-in from around the world. Um, I taught from Song of Solomon. So obviously I was camped camped in these spaces. But I just want to read these words to you again, um, if I may. They're the bridegroom king speaking to us. And he literally says, I want you to listen to this, girls, because in in truthfulness, the Word of God is applicable to every generation. And whilst these words were written to the ancients of long ago, they are deeply prophetic and deeply applicable to our lives. So in these chapters, it says, Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? Can you not discern Again, at the worship conference, one of the um, thoughts that I felt compelled to share was, I pray that these same skies will witness a generation who are steadfast in discernment, who can actually discern the days that we are living in. So here the Spirit of God says, can you not discern the new day of destiny breaking forth around you? Signs of my purpose and plan bursting forth, budding vines, new life, change in the air. It goes on and it says, You are the poetry of God, His handiwork. Out of your innermost being is flowing the fullness of my spirit. And within your womb is a birthing of harvest. The sons and daughters nurtured, nurtured by your purity, by the purity that you impart, the grace that you have become, the shining light on a hill. The word says, Look at her. How beautiful on the mountains, a tower of redemption, a wall of protection for others, a vineyard of my love. Now, you know, sweethearts, these words are so romantic and they are so poetic. But honestly, what girl, what woman in this life, if we peel back the layers and sometimes the the harshness of life, we peel it back, what girl doesn't want a bridegroom king to actually look at her and think these thoughts? They're absolutely beautiful. And, you know, just to be clear, the Song of Solomon was written prophetically of the body of Christ, the, the emerging church on the earth, but it is also written to the individual heart, which would be your heart tonight. 
And I read these and I'm reminded like in a moment we're going to look at this beautiful trailer again and sense the heart of God in the visuals of that. But um, what confidence He sees in us. What confidence He sees in you. I mean, who says that? Who says you are the poetry of God? I mean, seriously, who says that? Tonight, you might have like thinking there is nothing poetic about my life tonight. There was nothing poetic in the way that I got to church or the way that I got to my watch party with my girlfriends. But God looks at us. He looks at the potential within our lives. He says, you are my handiwork. Um, Out of your being is flowing the fullness of my spirit. Tonight, you may not even know the Holy Spirit. You may have no, you might be naive to the wonder of God's Spirit in your life. But you know what? The days that are ahead, God can see that. He can see that in you. He can see His Spirit alive and moving, prophetic and wondrous in your life. Um, It goes on, your, your womb is birthing a harvest. Well, this part of my life is not, it feels like it's just covid compromised right now. We've got COVID kilos and COVID pounds happening. But God looks at us and He sees, He sees our lives bringing forth, birthing vision, birthing dreams, birthing wonder in Jesus' Name. Amen. So many beautiful things. And then I just love, I love how He says, you know what? A tower. What does He call us? A tower of redemption, a wall of protection for others, a vineyard of love. And so, so many beautiful things. And again, like (laughs) time is ticking, it doesn't really matter. But, um, you know, again, the Word of God just applies to every generation. There is application of the Word to every generation. And there is application of this Word into your life tonight. And I love that. I love that. And so in essence, I come tonight as your friend, as your sister, as your Grammy, amen, Auntie Bobby, um, you know, Mother Dove, I come because I feel like I'm talking to the heartbeat of our church. And I just feel that the Spirit of God wants to encourage you. He wants to encourage you from Philippians 1 verse 6, the God who has begun a good work, if you allow Him, if you don't bail out, if you don't lose the plot, if you keep leaning in, He's going to complete the wondrous thing that He has begun in you. And then second, I just feel like the Spirit of God, um, and again, those alongside all of those girls up there in heaven, um, they just would say to us, hey, stay strong. Just stay strong. I know it doesn't feel new. I Probably every pastor on the planet is saying that right now. But the Spirit of God is saying, stay strong. Stay focused, hey? You know, stay fixed in all that you know of Jesus and all that you are yet to know of Him. Like there is more, you know, and keep the smile alive, girls. Keep it a smile. Keep that smile alive in Jesus' Name. Keep the rallying spirit alive in Jesus' Name. You know, I put up here, rally the smile, because honestly, I feel that language has been with me for a while. And I just feel that it's hook language that I'm going to personally take into 2022. We're going to build um, community and fellowship and wisdom around those words. So you know what? As is And I'm saying all of this because as is the language of Colour 22, um, do you know what? The poets, amen, the poets, the prophets, the everyday girls um, that we know and love, the everyday girls that God knows and loves, we are heading by the grace of God into the most new and exciting days. We really are. And it's, it's just not language. It's prophetic. It's real. You know, two years ago at Colour, it was be found in the new. And if you recall, I didn't even know what that meant. I stood on platforms and I said, I don't even know what that means, be found in the new. But God did. And then there were words, wild, bright awakening. And then the world went into like a pandemic and everything closed in and darkness began to swirl and people have lost their minds. And, you know, you think, what on earth is going on? Yet I want to say, girls, listen to me, you know, the promises of, of God upon His church and upon His people in the days that are to come at the end of time are irrespective of what is happening in the world. We don't have to worry about what is going on in the world. The world could be drowning in its own darkness, but the brightness, the wild, bright awakening, the Spirit of God on His people, that is going to be the light in the world. And that's why the Spirit of God would say to us tonight, stay strong, stay focused, stay stay centred in Jesus' Name. You know, um, 
Brian has been saying of late, you know, yes, the world has changed. The world has changed, but the church hasn't. The church hasn't changed. The core of this church that our Jesus saw when He hung upon that cross has not changed. And these are there are glorious days, critical days, strategic days, critical days, critical days because there are people outside of the knowledge of Christ who need to know that there is a God in heaven who loves them. And um, I honestly believe that your name is written all over the future. By the grace of God, your name is written over the future. So in a moment, I'm going to pray for uh, you. And um, I'm going to do as I said before, we're going to release the globals to go into their loca locations and go local. But here's the deal, sweethearts, if I may say, we are hosting Colour next year here in Sydney. We are stepping out in faith. We are hosting it. We're not downtown because it's just too crazy to get those big venues. So we are bringing the conference into our Hillsong Hills campus here, which is beautiful. We have the huge auditorium over there. We have an epicenter theatre. We have the chapel. We have beautiful grounds. And so we are in the room next year. And if you fancy a trip, everyone say fancy. <laughs> if you fancy a trip to Sydney next year and you're bold enough to come, hallelujah, then we invite you and we are going to, by the grace of God, um, just have our 26th year and produce the colour that we know and love. And we're also going to obviously bring a beautiful online experience. So we will create that and we will curate that for you and it will be, it will be spectacular. So I shared a lot of words really fast right now, but that's what you love about me. And I love you. I love you and I love you heart and soul and I believe in you. And... Um, how marvellous, as Paul wrote to the Philippians, how marvellous that we get to share in this beautiful matchless grace that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to pray for you. And then we are going to just um, lean into, this is no time to go to the toilet or put the jug on. We're going to lean in to this trailer. It's really the only worship or sound of worship that we're bringing here tonight. And I just want you to um, let the words that I have read to you from the Song of Solomon resonate into your heart. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you for these beautiful girls. I just thank you, Father God, for every single one. And you see them wherever they are. And Lord, we humbly, with, we come before you with humility of heart and we commit ourselves to you. Father, we thank you that we are alive at such a time as this. Father God, we thank you that we have a great host in heaven who is saying we can do this. And so, Lord, we align our hearts with your, yours. We align our hearts with theirs. And Father, we commit ourselves to you and to this glorious future and to one another. Lord, I pray that your spirit will be here heavy and strong and beautiful upon every person listening in tonight. Have your way, dear Jesus. We love you with all our heart, soul and strength. And Lord, we commit the future to you. We commit this colour conference coming up. Father, by the grace of God, anoint us to bring the next step, the next thing that needs to be said. And um, we're excited, Father God. I'm excited that you are going to stir the poets and the prophets and the everyday girls to be spectacular in the days that are ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Girls, why don't you just look to the screens right now?
shadows and wonder. What a beautiful invitation to Colour 2022. And uh, I don't know about you, but I loved hearing from our senior pastor, Pastor Bobby, and, uh, and we are still smiling. It's been a big couple of years, people. But, you know, as we were hearing her speak, uh, this scripture in 1 Corinthians came to mind in verse 58 of our chapter 15. And it says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. And I wonder if some of us are, we found ourselves in a place where we feel like what we have been pouring out in our careers, in our families, whatever context we find ourselves in, we're feeling like it maybe has been in vain. And I don't know if we can say we're standing firm, that we're still here. But what I do love is that we can be confident that God gives us the courage to keep standing and let nothing move us. And so I just want to pray a prayer for all of us here, for all the girls and any guys that may have jumped on board to listen, as Bobby said before. But pray a prayer that God would come, that He would pour courage and strength and vision. And maybe for some of us that feel like we're a little weary or that maybe some of the work that you've been pouring out into your life has been in vain, I want to tell you, that it isn't because there is fruit that we've not been able to see yet. But Father, we just thank You even now, God, for You girls, wherever we're connecting in, Lord, that You would be with each one of us. God, if there are girls joining with us today who feel a little overwhelmed, Lord, even as we've heard the message about still smiling and we're still here and we're still standing, Lord, that they're here and they're just not sure how they can keep going. Father, we thank You. Lord, that You are with us, that Your strength is our portion. And Father, give us Your heart, Father, so that we would be able to do all that You have planned for us. And God, that the people around us would be able to sense Your great love and presence. Bless Your girls in Jesus' Name. And we all said together, Amen. Type it in the chat. Amen. Amen. But you know what, girls, I just want to pray one more prayer for anyone that has joined us tonight, because I know that we come from all different backgrounds and walks of life. Maybe you've just stumbled across the YouTube link tonight and you've joined us and maybe church isn't really something that you've been familiar with. But I want to tell you, girls, that Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that He went to the cross for you, for me, for all of us. And uh, and maybe some of us are here and and we find ourselves in a place where, where maybe at one point we followed the Lord and we walked with Him, but this season has caused us to feel separated. Maybe we've walked away from what we know God is calling us to. Maybe you're here and you've never heard how much Jesus loves you, that our God in heaven gave His one and only Son for you and for me so that our sins could be wiped clean, so that we could have a brand new start. And today, I want to give every person that is joining with us the opportunity to invite Christ into your life, for you to to have a fresh new start so that Jesus could become your Lord and your Saviour. So I'm going to pray a prayer right now. And if you acknowledge and know that you need to make your peace with Jesus tonight, you want to invite Him into your life, why don't you pray this from your heart? Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. Thank you that when you died and rose again, that I also rose with you. I am a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. You have forgiven my sin and I am a child of God. Help me live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Why don't we all put some clap emojis in the chat and congratulate every person that prayed this prayer. So congratulations to anyone, girls, guys, whoever might be joining with us for making that decision tonight. We would love to know if you made that decision by texting Jesus to 84,000 and we would love to be able to walk with you for your next steps. So we love you girls. We're so excited that you made that decision. 
Girls, sisterhood has been phenomenal. It's been amazing. That colour invitation. I can't wait for colour 2022. So girls, you need to stay tuned because in the next week or two, we'll be letting you know some of the details. Um, Check your inboxes because we'll be um, sending some things coming up for you. Um, But right now what we're going to do is we are going to just linger a little bit longer. We're going to linger in worship. We're going to take time to let that message maybe seal our in you and uh, and we love you girls we're so grateful for you have the best week and uh, and we're going to see you in church right here um, on YouTube this weekend for all the Boston girls we'll see you in the room on Sunday let us pray before we worship Father we thank you Lord, for what You have done, Lord, and what You are doing in our midst. Jesus, I pray for every woman, Lord, that has joined us tonight. Lord, I pray that You would bless them. May Your your beautiful face smile on them. Let them sense Your grace and Your love and let them go out into this week knowing that they are a daughter of the Most High King. And Lord, that You are for them as we worship now. I pray that You would speak to each one of us, that that message would solidify in our spirits. Lord, bless you girls in Jesus' Name. Let's worship. There's a simplicity, humility to the way you love me in honesty, a purity. God, you make it easy. No special words or formulas ever win you over for your love is undeserved even when I can't see clearly somehow you still make it easy your love's uncomplicated you love me just the way I am So I stand before
Yeah.